everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up. Honestly, I was in a reading slump for like a good chunk of December so there's really not too many books. So I have seven books to talk to you about but four of them are graphic novels so like only three proper books were gotten to. Here are all of the books that I read in December. So we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna go just chronologically. So the first couple of books that I got to in December, I was so excited to read. I've been wanting to pick these up for the longest time. I found all three of them in my library, but I um, unfortunately don't have them anymore because I borrowed them at the library where my college is. So I'm not there right now. So I had to return them. But they are the first three Mortal Instruments graphic novels and I enjoyed these so, so much. I wasn't the biggest fan of the normal Mortal Instruments books. I mean, we all know this. I've talked about it a lot. I thoroughly enjoyed all of the graphic novels and I cannot wait to read the fifth one that comes out. I just think the addition of the artwork and I just love Cassandra Dreen's artwork too. Her style is just so cool and I love it. And I just think the visual portion that it added was needed. I don't know, I did, it just really enhanced things and I really enjoyed going back to relive some of the Mortal Instruments because honestly, I don't really remember that much about the series as a whole because I literally marathoned it in a week. So I have no idea, like, it, thoughts have left my head by now, I don't know. It was honestly like a whole new story because half the things that were happening, I was like, I don't remember <laughs> any of this. I gave the first one five out of five stars, the second one four stars, and I gave the third one five stars and then I gave the fourth one five stars. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oh, I actually have the fourth one. Here's the fourth one. I had to borrow this one from a library around here, so I need to return this soon, but I do have this one for visual purposes so you can look at it. <laughs> so if you don't know the general structure that these follow, it's like two graphic novels per book. So the first two correspond to City of Bones, the third and fourth correspond to City of Ashes, and then the fifth one, which is coming out in February, and the sixth one will correspond to City of Glass. So I'm very excited to see City of Glass um, adapted to a graphic novel. I feel like there's a lot of visual things that could be really interesting there, and I'm just so excited to see it. Yeah, that's all four of those I decided to read this month, and I'm so glad I did. Moving on to the rest of my books. So I picked this book up a while ago, and I'm glad I finally decided to get to it. I was listening to this as I was packing to go home for winter break from college, so it was a nice memory. <laughs> but that is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I gave this one a four stars, and I'm honestly kind of upset because I thought this was going to be a five star. But generally, I just didn't connect with our main character that much. But generally, I did like the scope of this book and I really liked the love interest and the general like fake dating plot. I thought it was fun. You had to know there was going to be some like some tension there. Love the tension. I did really enjoy that one of the main conflicts in this book stemmed from women, you know, in STEM not being taken seriously and, you know, just not being respected as much and coming from, you know, it's written by a woman in STEM herself. I just thought that was such a good idea to put that in this book and like talk about it more because obviously it needs to be talked about. Like I said, really enjoyed it. Just wasn't like quite there, but it was still really good. And I would 100% recommend this, especially if you're in a STEM field yourself. It was just fun, so yeah. All right, next up we have, and the only, wait, is this the only nonfiction? I don't know, there might be another. This is like one of the only nonfiction that I read this year because I don't generally enjoy nonfiction but I loved this author's work when I was in middle school. Um, the Fault in Our Stars was my shit in seventh grade. Like, let's be real here, it's probably all, like, we were all obsessed. I listened to The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green, and I liked this so much more than I thought I was going to. I just started listening to it on audiobook one day because I heard, like, the general concept, and I thought it sounded interesting, and it was accessible. The way that he was explaining it, it all made sense, and it wasn't, like, too over my head or anything and it was just so so fascinating so the general like idea of this book is john green reviewing things from the anthropocene which is like this kind of age that we live in i still don't really know how to explain it but i just loved the five star scale that he was rating everything on i really enjoyed that he ended off his chapters giving everything 
a review. Some of my um, favorite chapters were the ones on Diet Dr. Pepper because I love Diet Dr. Pepper too. Like that's my favorite drink. And the one on the penguins in Madagascar. That was so random. I loved the penguins in Madagascar when I was younger. Like the show that they had, I loved that show. I just generally really enjoyed the concept in this book. There was this one chapter. I need, I need to talk about this because I was blown away by this fact that like if you put the timeline of Earth from like when it was created to now and like put it onto a timeline of like a single year from like you know January to December I think it was like humans have only been on the world since December 28th and I was like oh my god that is going to send me into an existential crisis and I don't need that right now. I don't know, this book is just so fascinating to me and I really think, you know, if you're not into nonfiction, you might still enjoy this because it's just little snippets of things and it's not solely focused on one thing and going in depth to it. It's like general information about like a bunch of different things, which I really, just really enjoy. It was so good. So I gave that one a four out of five stars. Okay, so then the last book that I have to talk about is a start to a very, very popular fantasy series that I've been wanting to read for so long. And let me tell you, I'm so glad I started it because I think I'm trash for this series now. I knew it was gonna happen. Like, I, there was no way I wasn't gonna like this series, but after reading this book, I've also started the second book. I love it. And that is um, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This book, oh wow. I just, okay. I don't know, maybe I'm just basing my thoughts on this book on what I'm thinking about A Court of Mist and Fury right now because I am like halfway through that book and it is so good. But I still really enjoyed this one. The world is, it's very good world building. I feel like it's easy to follow and it's really, you know, it's like easy to picture. Like it's very atmospheric. She describes it so well. I love the characters. When I was going into this, I really thought I was gonna hate Feyre, but I think I'm just basing that off of the way I hate most YA protagonists. <laughs> but this is not YA. Maybe it was at one point. I don't know what the deal is, but I know it's not. I love, I, I don't think I've even read a Beauty and the Beast retelling, even though there's so many out there. So this is like the first one that I've like actually read and I really enjoyed it. Obviously, if I had read like, I don't know, 10 different books with that retelling, I probably would have hated this. But considering this is the first one, I thought it was really good. I loved the characters. I, ooh, this book was just so fast paced. Like the last like 130 pages, I was like, how is she gonna fit this in and not make it seem like super rushed? But I think she did a really good job with it. And I feel like all the information was told, but it wasn't like told in excess, you know? And I just, just wow. I mean, I didn't give this one a five stars. I'll probably give the second one a five stars, but I gave this one a four stars, but I still really enjoyed it. And that segues me into talking about the book that I'm currently reading, just because I want to mention it. And that is the second one, A Court of Mist and Fury. So yeah, this is going to be probably the first book I finished in 2022. So I'm very excited about it. Oh my God, this series is just so entertaining so far and I hope I continue to love it. I don't see how I wouldn't really. Like, I knew I loved fantasy romance. So I don't know why I hadn't read this book or series sooner. Those are my final books that I read in 2021. I don't think I'm mentally ready for 2022, but it's gonna happen, you know, whether I wanted to or not. So happy new year, because I do believe I'm posting this on January 1st. So hope you're all having a great new year. I'm very excited for the books that I'm gonna read next year. And I just wanted to also take a second to thank you all for the last year, because I started my channel very early in January of 2021. And honestly, it's just been, such a fun year. So if you've been, you know, subscribed since day one or if you came here yesterday, I thank you so much for subscribing and sticking around. It literally means the world to me. So thank you so much. I hope you all had a great New Year's Eve and are having a great New Year's Day. I will see you guys in my next video. Also, don't forget to let me know what you read in December. So yeah, bye.